how to make ambient music on the Ableton Push 3. Now, the Ableton Push 3 standalone pretty much runs Ableton with a few things missing, but that, of course, means it can make music in many, many different ways. I use it to make generative ambient, I would say, and it sounds kind of like this. <laughs> both has phrases that still change and evolve. I make ambient music specifically for four track cassette tapes. I use these as a DJ would use uh, LPs to uh, play his music. And uh, so mainly I'm using the push to make the bass fodder for the cassette tapes. And uh, yeah, I'll go through pretty much how I do this thing. So let's start with a new set, shall we? And um, first of all, let's delete the reverb and the delay. Even though I love reverb and delay, I'm trying here to make something that is uh, fascinating and um, magnetic without the use of those effects, because I usually use them when I play the cassette tapes. Let's start with a plucky kind of thing. What the pluck? Um, Malady. Well, that's good. So uh, let's find a good sound and then a good scale. I quite like the harmonic minor. Ah, take that. It's important to keep things really, really simple in ambient music. Um, and uh, these kinds of phrases just Sound good. I'm going to double that loop. You can see the loop here. Let's see here. Let's see. And then add different layers here onto that. Let's add a little low end here. Now comes the trick here. Go into edit mode and select all. Turn down the probability to about 25%. You want it on the edge of, you know, being new or every time it goes through the loop, but also keeping the phrasing of these simple melodies. I think we're about there, yes. Let's find another sound, maybe something a bit more organic. Um, in fact, let's find a sample. I quite like the strings. Let's see here. Quartet. Yeah. And let's find something here. I'm going to layer several sort of pitch bendy sounds and then also do the same trick with the probabilities. And also some low end, I think. Now the marimba sounds are sounding kind of out of context with the other, so let's add a device audio effect. Find something that will integrate it a bit. I think it'll be a redux there, yes. That's a bit much. Now it's of course, a little bit too loud. Okay. And uh, let's add another track, shall we? MIDI track. Electric. No, no. We'll start with the original sound. Yes. Here I'm going to use a note repeater. That'd be kind of fun. Find some chordal shapes that work. And you sort of spider your way around. And here we will not use the probability, but an arpeggiator device. MIDI effects. And that will select 
a different note of that chord and a random one in fact. In fact, I'm going to automate the sync rate. So it sounds kind of wonky and out. And let's see what we can find out for the last track. Find a MIDI track and maybe something a little bit more pad-ish. With some pad sound. Actually, go 16 bars and go. And I'll switch as I go along. down the probabilities. This way we only get about two notes or three notes over the chord. And then of course after I've made my uh, piece that is both generative but phrased based, I would go to the um, audio out and change it to one, two, three, four, so they're all separately addressable, bung it into the tapes and uh, have a piece of music that I could play. I hope you found this useful and uh, click subscribe if you want to see more of these kinds of things. Have a good one.